Hey, welcome to episode 17. It's all about painting. Well, actually, no. It's all about uh, finishing up the D21 front suspension. Some more R&D. Getting it all done. And then, uh, all the suspension's done. And then we actually start painting. You can see here, I just recently stripped the door. That'll be in a future episode. Strip this thing bare. That was a interesting challenge. Yeah, it's all about uh, starting the painting on the end of this episode. The beginning is uh, finishing the D21 front suspension. So if you like this video, subscribe and uh, hit the like button. All right, Amber. Starting to rain. All right, I got the tension rod on. I noticed that it lines up exactly with the old one in a different place. So I went ahead and made a little, started making a bracket to relocate it over here. It's way off from the other one. So uh, that'll be fun. So I think I figured out how to box this in to make this stronger. First thing I need to do is cut off this tower. I may move it over a little bit, center it in the A arm, put it back on for a while. Like I said before, I plan on doing coilovers in the future at some point. But for now, I guess I can keep running torsion bars. And then I took a piece of, uh, oh boy, it was like two by, I don't know what size this is, but figure it out later. I cut it in half. The plan is to kind of box it in. Ironically, without washers on those bolts, exactly the right size fits nice on the frame here and on that plate that I got the nuts on I'll weld it in and I can just box it in down to the frame down here on both sides and I think that'll look better and be strong I hope and it'll give me a place to mount to for a future coilover tower thingy so that's the plan so I just need to weld this up and then grind off the paint Alright, so I made some templates and I added on a plate here, a plate here, and a plate here. Three plates to box that in. It's all toasty and uh, still good. Can't touch it. I'll turn my light. Got a little well down there, so I got the three plates, so that ain't going anywhere. So hopefully it's in the right spot. Also, I picked up one of these digital. Levels finally. So triple check everything. So I'll have to cool it down. We'll put it all back together again. So I'm working on this uh, tension rod mount. Starting with a quarter inch plate. I think that was like a one inch hole. I clear that shaft. And it's two inch wide plate. I cut it two and a quarter. So the plan is to put it like that. I'm going to put a box. I think I'm gonna. This is a uh, 14 gauge 2x2. Two two. You can see it'll fit quite nicely up like that. Obviously, chop out the bottom. So it'll only be half of this. I could actually cut it in half and have two of them, you know what I mean? So there'll just be a, a top and a partial side on each side, and the bottom will be open. And I noticed that it's the same height as the old hole. Which makes sense because it's got to line up with that pivot point down there. So I'm thinking about going and finding some two and a half inch square. Because uh, all I have is 14 gauge and I think two and a half inch, 11, uh, eighth inch gauge would be better. Let's see from the bottom, Let's see from the top better. So, uh, yeah, let's get that thing mounted up. Alright, so tension rod boxes. Uh, should have just bought some straight flat stock, the right width, but I just made it out of some scrap steel. I think it's like two and a quarter. I made a block of wood, two and a quarter, and then I clamped. I basically took a piece of steel the same length that I needed, cut it diagonally. That's my two sides. I should have actually mounted it upside down because it's a nice straight edge, but. This is the bottom of the truck. 
And then I got my thick piece where the rubber bushing goes in. Clamp it to my jig. Now it's gonna tech weld this. My idea is I wanna weld the inside of the box. So when it's upside down, you'll just see a nice finished edge from the top. That way I don't have to grind for hours all that weld. Let's see how this goes. So this is step A, weld this box. And uh, then we'll put it on the truck and add some tabs to connect to the frame. But this part actually reaches the frame and this part reaches the tension rod. So this should be enough to get it in the right place. Here's a good thing about doing the other side. You take the steel from one side and just lay it on there. Trace it out. You know where to cut it. So next step, I'm going to cut off both bump stops. I can't believe these old rubbers are still good. And I just looked it up. This is the same rubber from 83 to 2004. It's pretty cool. I uh, just finished my uh, tension rod bushings. Kind of ugly, but they can clean up. So I intentionally welded the uh, inside because that'll be the bottom. You won't see them. And I can grind these, make them pretty, and try to figure out where they go and add on as needed. Hopefully, those are working. Okay, so after I re-leveled the frame up, double-checked everything, I was like 89 degrees level. I wasn't 90 anymore for somehow. Then I noticed the truck is not even perfectly level zero from side to side anymore. Well, it's raising up and down. So I did something I didn't want to do. I cut this plate out, and the original frame is right here. And it, the original frame was on the inside. You know, I put that nut insert plate on the outside. But really, it needs to go in more for a couple of reasons. One, I need a little bit more. It was just barely zero degrees sometimes. Now it's not. So what I want to do is push it back enough that I can actually have a factory. I think it's in the book. Factory shim is almost three millimeters, eighth of an inch, which is the thickness of the frame. So I'm going to push this thing back. Probably the nut cert plate will be on the inside of the frame. So that's how I'll do the other one. So to do that, I cut all this off and uh, turn back on. I can almost get double nuts in there, but that's a little too much. But I drill holes through the back. This is something I've always wanted to be able to do. I can actually run a longer bolt um, and I can even put a nut on the outside if I had to, like let's say that's stripped out or something. So instead of cutting all this out, fixing that threaded bolt, I can put a nut on the inside. But at least I can see how much thread is in or out. You know, if, if the alignment shop puts a bunch of shims in here, like they like to do, you know, when you lower your truck or raise your truck, they put in a big old stack of shims. Um, and it says in your book you can actually have, I think it's at like eight millimeter total, which seems like way too much. I don't think there's enough bolt for that. And these are the same bolts. These are four drive and two drive bolts, they're the same. And it says you can't have more than a three millimeter difference between the two front and back. But yeah, it's crazy, and it says the, you know, the tool drives have about a, almost a, it's like 2.8 or whatever it is, millimeters. So that way I'll have a little bit more adjustment inward, just in case it's not zero anymore for whatever reason. That's why I had to cut all this off and do it better. So I gotta figure out how to weld, I wanna weld it on the inside. Oh, I don't wanna make another one of these plates. I gotta figure out how to get that on there perfectly. I got this one all ready to go. I even cut down more, figuring out how to raise this bump stop. I got this sh this thing all ready to go. That's when I decided to uh, go a little bit, get this thing perfect. I destroyed a little control arm bushing trying to put it in, so I got our new ones. I went to the junkyard yesterday and uh, tried to get some more parts, got some more bolts. Um, yeah, I need to order another lower control arm bushing, lower control arm, and the bolt still. So I did get a sway bar. 67 degrees. Alright, so here's a little um, comparison. The stock motor mounts are 10 millimeter by 1.25. I already converted one side to 10 by 1.5 bolts. 
I think because that's what the bolts are on the block. Yeah, so now they're all 10 millimeter, well, they're 14 millimeter head, but 10 millimeter bolts. The stock bolts in the frame are these little, I don't know what they are, 5 sixteenths or some weird size. Super fine thread. Yeah, fine. But the, I wanted to upgrade them to the same head size, 14 millimeter head. So this is 10 by 1.25. This is 10 by 1.5. So now I'm going to change the frame to match so all the bolts on the block, the engine, and the frame. All three of them will be 14 millimeter heads. So I just need 11 30 second drill bit, 10 millimeter tap. And then uh, let's drill it out. Come on. There we go. I hope that was real. Now my bolts are 10 millimeter size, 14 millimeter heads. Easy. Oh, I forgot to mention you have to draw out your uh, motor mounts a little bit. So that's the only downside. So if I ever buy new motor mounts in the future, I'll have to enlarge these holes. Not a big deal for extra strength. This is what a two inch wheel spacer looks like with the factory 14 inch wheels. The tread doesn't even, just sticks out a little bit, but the tire definitely does. That's a two inch wheel spacer and it doesn't rub on the B6 calipers. Yeah, I think I like it better with a one inch, even I haven't tried a one inch yet. Yeah, it actually lines up. Yeah, it's definitely an inch out, isn't it? That's exactly an inch. Well, half an inch on this lip. So, half inch or one inch spacer it is. So I primed it a little while ago. I just did some seam sealer. Getting ready to put some uh, real primer on the engine bay. And then paint. All right, so this is how you fix the hinges. These hinges, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little dent right here to keep the pin in. When I bought the truck, there's no pin. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know how they got it out of there because you have to remove that dent to get the pin out. So maybe they rusted out or broke or something. So I found her out, figured out like I think it's 5 16 bolt is pretty close. So what you got to do is you got to get a real long drill bit, like 10 bucks at Home Depot. And you can drill these out. See if I can do this left handed. Nope. Okay, just a hair longer drill bit. Oh. There we go. Done deal. Now I can put a nut or a cotter pin or whatever. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. I, I could even weld them, but that may not be a smart idea. What do you think of burnt orange? Metallic. Let's go see. I don't know. I like it, but... I think any color will look good. Still not so long as color yet. I don't know. Should have done a layer, another layer of primer, I could tell. But just kind of anxious to see what this color looks like. Still a few dents and stuff I didn't take out. There we go. Just uh, first coat. Second try. Man, there's a lot of scratches in there. Oh, I'm terrible at sanding. It's so hard to get those scratches out. This looks terrible. I don't know. I should just strip this whole thing down with an aircraft stripper and that old paint I sanded. It's left tons of marks. Here we go again. Let's try painting this tailgate again. Okay. 
definitely getting better at screwing this guy. Not as bad as last time, six years ago. Had a lot of pumping. Alright, this is what it looks like with a D21 lower control arm, upper control arm, spindle on here. All I did was uh, remove the factory uh, 521 bolts, the welded in bar, and I put the control arm on the back side, like the old 520s used to be on the D21s. They're mounted on the outside of the frame on there. 521s seems like the difference between the ball joint and the kingpin on the kingpin. They're mounted on the inside. They're mounted on the inside. So this crossbar is mounted on the inside. It, at first glance, it looks pretty good. The truck's basically at right height. Put this about uh, zero degrees. There's about zero. I put the ball joints about zero degrees, top and bottom. That's about right height. The caster, it's about five degrees. That's good. But the problem is your camber. Your camber is 86 degrees. So you want that to be 90, right? Or zero. In order to make it 90, you'd have to uh, pull the crossbar backwards. And you can't, because the frame's in the way. So that's the problem. So that's why I had to cut the frame off on the other side. And if I mount the crossbar on the inside, same problem. It's got to come over quite a bit. So this frame completely gets in the way of getting good alignment. Now if you like 86 degrees or minus 3 camber, cambered out, that seems to be a trend in some countries. <laughs> Then uh, this is for you. This is a stock D21 uncut onto a 521 frame. I measured at the distance between these bolts, the junk here. It was like 20 inches on a hard body. It's like 16 or something here. It's a huge difference, but I still need to run about a half inch spacer to get it to come out to the fender. But, um, yep, yeah, so um, I'm going to do what I did on the other side. Oh, the other problem with running D21 stock stuff is the uh, tension rod is totally different. Everybody knows that's a problem. So I'm not running the 521 tension rod or sway bar. I'm going to run the D21 sway bar. It'll line up about here where my rack and pinion is. So I need to move that. But it looks like it'll bolt right up on the frame using all the stock locations. I just got to drill two holes and the Hopefully the D21 sway bar will clear everything, but it's the same frame width as the 521 here, but not here the same frame width, which is interesting. So uh, let me show you the tension rod on the other side. Came out pretty cool. Let me see from the top. There's the D21 tension rod. I just made a little pocket. Looks like it will work. Pretty ugly, it's all dirty and everything straight from the junkyard, but it looks like a D21. So now I've got a base to start from. Now I can put on lowering spindles or a dropped lower control arms or an airbag or whatever I want to do to lower it. Okay, here's another scenario. I've got the crossbar mounted on the outside of the frame. No nut plate. The nut plate's on the inside of the frame just to get the maximum insideness. It's at right grind height, basically like zero degrees at uh, on the ball joints, give or take. Doesn't matter if I go bottomed out or not, or even negative. I think I'm gonna get it down to zero. Doesn't really matter. I get it right high, bottomed out, full droop, full compression. It doesn't change the fact that this is 92 degrees, so it's positive camber. Positive camber on the outside, negative camber on the inside. This thing needs to go back a little bit more. This thing's in the way. Frame is in the way. That's the problem. 
So what is the easiest way to do this? I think what I got to do is put a nut plate, put a shim in between the nut plate and this, bolt it all together, then weld this brace, this nut plate, to my little frame. That's what I did the last time. And then come back and cut out the frame. That's kind of what I did on the other side. Uh, I gotta figure out how I did that now so I can do it again to make it match. Okay, here's an interesting note. All the old trucks, like 320, 520, 620, up until they went to ball joint, they were all four inch long bolt. And then they went, in 620, they went, I guess with the ball joints, they went to the longer bushing. It's four and a half inches long. The bolt is four and a half inches long. As you can see, the threads are different, and uh, but the star is the same, the diameter is the same, the length is longer, but the star is the same. So here's my old 521. Same stun. And this bolt goes all the way up to the D22 to 2004, which is cool. So basically from like 77 to 2004, 620, 720, D21, D22, one bolt. Pretty easy to find, brand new, like 15 bucks. All right, so here's the plan. I put the crossbar on the outside of the frame, bolt it on flat, and I put one washer. I put a spacer than a washer here. So basically, crossbar against the outside of the frame, then a washer, then the nut plate, and then my chop down one by three eighth, eighth inch. I'll put that over the top, and then, fortunately, the nuts won't go any through any further. I guess I could take the crossbar off and then bolt this on here. That may be a good idea, and then I could uh, rework my little thingies. Go on here. Where's my other one gone? My big one. Must be on the floor. Oh, here it is. Actually, that's the wrong one. It's the ones I used on the other side. So that's the one that goes on the back. Yeah, so I gotta chop these down because I re-shrunk them. This is the one that goes on the front. And the original design was that big. And then I moved it around. So I'm happy with the, the specs on that side. Just need to grind it down, clean it up. Probably put another plate on here, box it all in, grind it down, and I think it'll look OEM-ish. So, uh, yeah, so the problem is, yeah, so I think I'm going to take the crossbar off again, just put on the nut plate by itself. I think I'll whirl the nuts to the nut plate off the truck like I did last time. Then I'll put it back on with one washer one washer that way once I cut off the tower and cut off the frame and remove the washer I probably will need the washer just to get zero and I'll have a washer to adjust back and forth just like factory all right so I think this is the best combination so I've got a not in a washer to compensate for the crossbar and I've got a washer to give me uh, some adjustability to emulate the stock shim and then I've got another washer in there to compensate for the frame that's going away so that's this side and just the bolts now I gotta go to the other side and you can see I put a line through that hole so that I know to get that crossbar close to the way it should be let's try this okay so there's what it looks like from the side profile you can see the washers and the nut plate the frame that's going to go away now this is going to hold this rear of the box, it's going to go like that. So obviously, in the original design, i got to cut out some of that cardboard. Make it an eighth inch. I got another one for the other side, which is the same thing. Just a little bit bigger, which is missing in action. Where'd it go? I don't know where it went. Anyways, so i got to make these now. First got to modify these, and then i got to make them. Because I can't just weld this to this, and I can't weld, I can weld that to that, but I want to put this plate on. I can weld that to this frame down here. Yeah, that looks good. That came out better than the other side. I'm happy with that so far. Hopefully, this will work. 
All right, I got that side all done. And I noticed this side was a little crooked, so I had to fix it. So I had to cut all this out. This thing wasn't sitting flush with the back plate. So I went ahead and pushed it back. A uh, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, I don't know what it was. I decided to go ahead and uh, get rid of this plate. It's kind of maybe in the way. I think I ought to get rid of this next. I'm going to put a new plate across here. I just ordered some coilover shocks, so I don't know if they're going to clear or not. But I think I might as well go ahead and move this stuff to give me the best chance of uh, clearance. So that was a lot of fun, a lot of mess. And uh, got the bolt tension rods done. So I got bolt tension rods installed. So that's cool. Just gotta do the other bushing. So now I got dual tension rods. Well, I've decided on a color. And this ain't it. So unfortunately, the burnt orange is going away. I love the color, but it just didn't come out well. So, time for white. Back to the original color. All right, so I just added a piece of uh, eighth inch flat stock, two inch wide. I think it was five and three quarter inches long. To plate up that original mount. So now, uh, where's my mock-up shock? to give myself a little more room for uh, coilovers. I think the next step is to make a new shock tower. I don't think this will work, but it's the same design as the factory one. I think I'm gonna make it a bolt-on for now because I don't know where it's gonna be and I like the idea of bolt-on. That way I can change it up and down, take it on and off and work on it. I might as well utilize these two bolts. I could easily just put longer bolts in there and Put some little ears and put two more bolts down below. Make it a nice strong bolt on. Kind of like I did on the 92 and 93 solid axle swaps where I had those aftermarket bolt on coilover towers. This needs to go at some point, but uh, I was going to weld with these things, but I think I may put on the original bump stop limiter at some point. I'll limit the down travel, but. I'm not going to worry about that now. Alright. I think that's about as good. Oh, I forgot to grind that spot. <laughs> just grind it. Just weld up some of these gouges that I put in the frame. I was cutting. Forgot to grind one spot. Oh. I'll be back. I can't believe how cool it looks. Stoke the bed is on. And... Alright, this is annoying. I bought some new lower control arm tension rod bushings. And they're not as, they're a lot longer than the stock ones. They're nice rubber, but I'll try to cut them down, make them the same size. I think they would fit, but they'd be kind of close on the thread, so. Uh, the original ones are pretty pitted, but they're in thicker steel, and they're like solid steel. These are just like a roll piece of sheet metal. I like the original steel better, but it is pretty rough. Here you go, D21 suspension on a 521. Stock lower control arm, stock upper control arm. It was 90 degrees a second ago, I swear. Five degrees of caster. Four to five. Oh, I got a lip right there, I gotta worry about. Now it's showing three, it's showing five a second ago. Actually, it's not a right hat anyways. You get the idea. Looking good. Here's the new color. Change the change my mind on the color. I'm liking this white. This is three light coats. Looks good. Maybe the sun needs to come out and maybe we'll see all the flaws. But man, that looks really good. Little bugs landing in and everything. It's crazy.